All right, we're live. Welcome to episode 30 of the Pro Go Baruch Weichi podcast. I'm Shao Dai, and we have again Gaza. 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 We don't have our special guest is coming next week. I can't wait. But uh, Oh, we've got a special guest next week? Uh, I think we do. We do. We do. Unless, unless of course, something happens. You know, something something unexpected happens. Like what happened in this uh, year's Samsung Cup. Oh, oh yeah. So oh, yeah. Um, we're recording this a couple of days late. Is that right? Uh, well, yeah. Well, you can call it late or you can just call it, you know, whatever. Uh, this is We're recording this on a Monday. Normally, we record our podcast on Friday. But we might as well because the semifinals of the Samsung Cup had just concluded. And uh, we're going to cover all the way from uh, the round of 16 to the semifinals and do a preview of the final, of course. Yes. So we, in last week's podcast, we covered round one. Yeah. And uh, a lot has happened <laughs> since then. Yeah. You could, you could put it mildly. Yeah. Now, I think we, we all recall that in round one, Sumire beat, what, what, what's, what's his name again? Guan, Guan Ho Jin. Guan Ho Jin, yeah. We thought yes. that, that that might have been uh, that might have been the 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 one the one thing that, that defines this Samsung Cup. But how wrong were we? Well, yeah, this has been perhaps the most insane. I think this has been the craziest tournament of the year. We've mm. had some crazy tournaments this year. We've had the the Senko Cup, yep. where the top two women's players both lost in the first round. Yep. And um, we had the Nongshim Cup, where Shinjin so you know brought Korea. Up from the depths of hell yep. to win the entire tournament, yep. virtually single-handedly, and then we also had the Hoban Cup, where you know Asami started pulling off some miracles. Uh, although in the end, it was it was futile. Yep. Um, and and all, let's let's not, let's really not forget crazy. Yamayuta's four wins in Nongshim Cup, you know, to make yes, Japan not technically come last. that technically that wasn't yeah technically that wasn't this year, but it oh, was the same okay. Nongshim Cup. Yeah, it was the same Nongshim Cup where Shinjin So um, yeah. had his four wins. So yes, yeah, so that that was still very very impressive feat by Iyama. Yep. Um, but I think all of those pale in comparison to what we've to what has taken place in the in in the last week in the Samsung Cup. And I would imagine that most of the people that are listening to this podcast already know what we're talking about. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, because you know they're fans of the pro scene, and the Samsung Cup has really been all anyone's been talking about. Yep, exactly. Um, but but let's um let's start from where we left off. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. I do want to I do want to make a couple of corrections to some things that we mentioned last podcast. Right. So we uh, you already mentioned that Sumire yeah um, beat Kwon Ho Jin, and that was quite impressive and yeah. it really was the story of the first round correct um we we theorized that she may have been the youngest player to win a game yeah. in a yeah. world major and yeah. it turns out that is not correct right um the the youngest that we've that i've found is yang ding Xin, who yeah. was 13 years and four months old when he won in the biling cup I believe it was the first Biling Cup. Right. He won a game. Nice. Um, and that's just... Yes. Um, Sumire is 13 years, seven months. Right. So Yang Dingxin was three months younger. And that kind of makes sense because, believe it or not, Yang Dingxin actually turned pro at um, younger age than Sumire did. Right. Um, he was only nine years and seven months, I believe. He may have... He may have been... Uh, he could have been one of the the youngest ever before um, uh, that young Japanese kid Rio yeah. Fujita. Wow! Uh, a month or so ago. Yeah. But yeah, he won a game in the Biling Cup. Um, Crazy. Age thirteen years four months. However, Sumire did set some records. Apparently, wow. she is the youngest to reach the last sixteen. Right. Of a world major, so Yang, the Biling Cup when Yang Dingjin won his game, that was um, it's a sixty-four player tournament, right? So winning that only got him to the round of thirty-two. Here, um, Samsung Cup is a thirty-two player tournament, so with that win, Sumire went into the round of sixteen, and she's the youngest to do it. Right. I believe the previous record was set by Ji Erhao, yeah, in a, one of the BC Card Cups, mm. I believe, yep. 
And I think Xie Hao may have been a couple of months older than Samire is now. Oh, wow. Yeah, but Samire set that record. And she's also the first Japanese woman to win a game in a world major. Yep. It turns out, actually, she's the only Japanese woman to ever participate in a world major. Um, no other Japanese women have played in a in an open world major, that is. Right. Um, so the fact that she won uh, means that she is the first Japanese woman to, to do so. Oh, wow. Um, hopefully, it'd be, in, it'd be cool to see more Japanese women participate in world majors, but, um, yeah, we, we shall see. Yeah. We shall see. Um, okay, well, thanks for that correction, Gaza. But let's get into the round two, which is the round of 16. Now, there were uh, seven Koreans in the round of 16. Um, and uh, and these were the matchups. So, uh, Byung sang Yo versus Gu Zihao. Um, I believe Byung sang Yo uh, killed a dragon in this one. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Are we able to look at the Kifu for yeah, that one? Yeah, let's look at Kifu. So I the so the um so obviously the round of sixteen has eight games. Yeah. And the way that the Samsung Cup is has been set up is that um they played from uh, six straight days. So they had six straight days of games. Yep. Um, the round of sixteen was over two days. The quarterfinals were over two days, and the semifinals were over two days. Yeah. So Monday and Tuesday were the round of 16, and I felt they had four games on Monday, four games on Tuesday, and I, I felt that all four games on Monday were quite exciting. Right. And this would be one of them. Yeah, so this is one of the Monday games. Um, Byun sang is black. Yep. Um, Guzi Hao obviously is white, and it, it becomes... Yeah, it's... See... You can already see at this point, Byun sang is playing very um, attacking, very aggressive. Yeah. Um, cutting up uh, White's shapes. Yeah. And I do believe that White has a bit more territory at the moment. Yeah. So the idea is is to attack and, and somehow kill something. Yeah. Now, I, I guess I guess it, it territory doesn't mean anything if, either of this group dies because notice that this black group here technically isn't fully alive this white group here also technically isn't fully alive so if if either of these groups die then uh it, it doesn't really matter all of those other so-called territory are just breadcrumbs really and um, so what what happened here gaza um, so yeah um so uh, well, I, yeah. So white is is um, playing solidly on the left, and then I think black attacks white's middle group. Yeah. Now, basically, at, at this point, it's pure. It's it's a little bit about your know, reading abilities, and you know how far you can read. Of course, it's the situation here is still very complex. Now, apparently, from the commentaries I've read here, this is uh, white. White this move here isn't isn't really well received by by AI. And the idea is that I think white was meant to tighten the liberty of black by playing here instead of um, extending. Um, that seems a little bit innocuous and a bit hard to read. And you kind of have to have great reading ability to even figure out that might be a mistake. But uh, apparently that was that was not, not a good good idea. But I think uh, Guza hasn't lost yet. But by this point, uh, when black... Uh, Wedges here. Apparently, a black white doesn't have time to Atari under, so white has to kill. Oh his wow! Group. Yeah, so let you see exactly what's happening here. Uh, it, it looked like uh, yeah. So because white had no time to Atari under, black went to penetrate through as well. Yeah, that's that's got to hurt. Yeah, and uh, and the problem is <laughs> once black cuts here. Now apparently, no matter what white does now. This white group will get captured, so at this point, basically, it's already too late for Gu Zihao. But I think I guess Gu Zihao was playing quite well, but it was just one one kind of seemingly maybe a bit innocuous mistake, just by not tightening the liberty. Uh, you know, white's white's gone down a path where there's no return from this, and uh, white ended up losing yeah. the game. But this sequence, like this, 
this the sequence after this is still pretty crazy because all of yeah. like <laughs> you can see all the yeah. black's got so many disconnected yeah sets of stones like yeah. But like not, nothing, nothing that Black has is completely alive. But they all manage to escape by the the barest of yeah, it's crazy. Of, right? uh, yeah, margins. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it looks like this Black group here. There's a cut point, obviously. There's two white stone Black stones running out, but apparently just none of them could be captured. And of yeah. course, this Black group would have more liberties than this White group over here. So just push once, and that's it. Um, so. It just wasn't, but Guzia kept on kept on trying, but apparently it was just all, you know, to 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 someone to a pro or to someone who actually bothered to read this out. Um, it's it's all everything he's he's trying to do here is basically futile. It was never gonna work. Um, even though the game continued for quite a bit, <coughs> it was basically no way back because you can see here this white group, um, is basically captured. Yeah, so um, Guzia resigned here. It was a bit of a shame, but uh. Well done to Beyonce Sang Yeah, yeah no, just crazy this final position because again, it looks like you know, the the groups that are sur the groups that are killing white, mm. Lax groups that are killing white yeah. don't have two eyes. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, the one on the middle right does have two eyes, but the one in the corner, the one in the middle, the one in the lower right. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, yeah. just crazy, and that's that's his style. Yeah, Beyonce Sang Yeah. yeah. Hey, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't, but he's number two in Korea, so uh, it's crazy. Yeah, um, he's he's having a good he's having a good uh, Samsung Cup. It seems. Yeah. I don't know if this is considered a shock, but normally I would I would consider Ichiki Rio to be a stronger player than Choi Jong, but Choi Jong managed to. This is a off. huge shock. This, this is a huge, huge shock. shock. Now right. I know that I know that you're not a huge um, fan of the Japanese players, uh, but. Uh, Ichiriki Rio yeah. is the Kisei. He does yeah. have the Kisei. Yeah. Um, and he may not be in good form, but you have to be honest, neither was Choi Jong coming into this Samsung Cup. No, yes. You remember for context, Choi Jong just lost the a game in the Hoban Cup to Yuano Asami. Yeah. yeah. And you would you would have to you would have to say that Ichiriki Rio is a very strong favourite here. Yes. I think even by ratings points, uh, Ishiriki Rio is a lot, uh, a lot higher than Choi Jong. Yeah, so consi it, considerably ahead of Choi Jong. Ra yeah. Ratings points are hard to compare between players of different countries, but yeah. I, I think they're they're only like calibrated by these kind of international games. But yeah. Ishiriki Rio is black here. Choi Jong is white. Um, so as this game as this game progresses, uh, basically black kind of races to a fairly sizable lead. I believe according to to AI, um, by the time um, these kind of things happen, uh, they're still fighting here, but uh, as at one point, Ichiki was leading, according to AI, by about 13, 14, 15 points, somewhere around that range. Um, so, so Black's got quite a bit of the corner. This white group here is obviously not alive under attack. This white group here is a bit stronger, but also uh, black and honey and a double honey later on so so there's two at least two white groups in danger and there's only one black group running so every time this black group gets stronger both sides of the white group gets a bit a little bit weaker. Mm. so mm. yeah so you see a tricky play here obviously threatening to i guess honey later on so uh, so based on all of this uh Ichiriki is is probably a bit a little bit ahead um, so Choi Jong is a little bit in, in a little bit of trouble. Okay, so Choi Jong uh, by this time is already about 15, 14 points uh, behind. But Choi Jong is still trying, uh, threatening the black group. But apparently, when a black push and cut here, this black group is pretty safe. Um, uh, White's attacks are just not gonna work out. But anyway, they keep going. So now Choi Jong is desperately trying to do something. To try and disconnect, potentially trying to scare Ichiriki uh, into into saying that I'll disconnect your two groups. Okay. Now, Gaza, this is this is an interesting point in the game because um, uh, now apparently 
if you look at these two, these two stones look like they're captured, right? But of course, at any point, Ichiki can Atari up, and Black will have to connect, and then can connect back to this one stone. So, uh, I, I imagine somehow you kind of have to handle this, but Ichiki played here, which was a huge mistake. Yeah, uh, it's um, this was this was definitely a miss a misstep by Ichiriki. I think he, I think he should have just connected. Yeah. Right. Or, or just honey under. Now, the issue oh, yeah. is very obvious when you look at the next move. Uh, Choi Chong atari here. Now, Black's tail is now gone. Yeah, um, Black can't connect. Yeah. I mean, it can, but... And then White is going to atari here. And it's back to what I mentioned before, because it can either capture this one stone or connect back. So, uh, it just turns out that this Black White doesn't have... Um, yeah. It... it it, Black cannot stop, uh, cannot rescue his tail now. So this brought the game much, much closer. I think this is, according to AI, this would be like even. And I don't, and I think if you, if, if Ichigi doesn't do something, it actually, you can say, even say that Black is a little bit. Uh, actually, actually, I, I think, no, I think White's ahead yeah. Um, now. Yeah, White's ahead by maybe one one or two points, something like that. I, but... I, yeah, it's, it's hard to say because you need to run it on, on AI for a long time, but yeah, I think what like when I run it on Cardigo, it says White's ahead by like five points or something. Oh like right, that. right, right. But yeah, it does look like a huge, huge, huge loss. It's it's a it's it's a, yeah, it's a reversal. It's a huge mistake by yeah. by Ichiriki to to miss. He he obviously he mustn't have seen that move that response yeah. by White. I'm not really sure what Ichiriki's missed because um, it's it's a bit difficult to say. Um, I haven't read any kind of articles about this, but I, I, I have a theory as to what, what he's missed. Um, what, what move was is this? 156, right? Let's go to move 156. Now, my theory is that uh, he thought that White could only Atari up, and then he can just connect, and now White has no time to descend, so White has to take. Then he can still connect under. Um, yep, I, I suspect that's that's what he was thinking, uh, but of course, I guess what he missed was that why could just directly Atari. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Of, co of course, we can't confirm that, but yeah, it seems just, intuitive. Yeah, just just a theory. Um, but it's, I, I'm not sure how strange it is for a top pro to make this kind of mistake. Um, but I guess you know. What's happened's happened. So. Yeah, well, I mean, we we did. Well, I did get some feedback from one pro, right? Who said that it, it, yeah, it was very. Like, he couldn't really understand how Ichiriki missed this. Yeah, yeah. Very strange, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can see how an amateur maybe could could miss something like but like this, but yeah, I didn't expect Mind, Ichiriki to yeah. miss it. Yeah, mind you, though, this did not. Um, this only what was I, I i do think white was ahead now yeah, at yeah. this point but this was not the end of the game no. um credit to ichiriki he still like the game is still very complicated and he fought back yeah and he, 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 he fought back i guess at this point he kind of connected just to so that he can connect he and sente and try to capture these these white stones um uh, now the, the game keeps on keeps on keeps on going and uh and i think ichiriki at some point um, cut didn't cut this group off, but Ichiki, this group is also cut off. It throws in now. When he made this move, this apparently is a Tetsuji. Um, now imagine for White to tighten the, the the liberties of this black group, even though it looks like it's only got one eye. Like, um, well, why why can't directly tighten from this side because yeah, can can, can get captured. So it needs a, f a couple of moves here to tighten the liberties on this side, and of course, uh. White cannot directly tighten right away, so connect and a, a and a tar and tighten here doesn't work because black can just Atari from there. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so this looks like it's 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 obviously dead. It's only got one eye, but the it's got quite a few liberties on the outside. And you but, need to but it's not necessarily dead because white's got white's group on yeah white surrounding group on the right. Right, is it's it's sort of a capturing race. I think. Yeah, it's a capturing race. So basically, it's it now comes down to who has more uh, uh, liberties. Mm. 
Yeah, and this, yeah, that that move by Black on the first line, yeah, um, yeah that that I believe that gave gave Black enough liberties, or it should have given Black enough liberties. Yes. Uh, but uh, then, but, Black, but then Black plays this move here. Yeah, which move two twenty seven, which is a huge and this was blunder. the second. Yeah, this was the second o- oversight by yeah. Ichiriki in this game. Now, apparently, Ichiki, what Ichiki should have done is just to um, uh, throw in there. Um, so, 2-2-7. Two, 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 so, apparently, Ichiki, instead of playing this move, Ichiki should have played here. Yes, And that, yes. Would, that would have just worked. Um, so, uh, uh, so, let's say, yeah. Um, I can't remember the sequence, but that, that would probably, you can see that... Um, White takes here. Um, I wonder how does the sequence go like this? Um, no, it doesn't work. No, I think you can. No, I think you can Atari um, at H five. Yeah. Yes, I think that will work. Yeah. So that's one, two, three, four, five, a five also. Yeah. So. It might, it might just win out in Liberty Race, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think it does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably going to win out in the Liberty Race. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's Ichiki's second mistake because what happened was uh, Choi Jong, after doing some time, time suji stuff, connects this. And now uh, it Black can cannot take this point, I think. Yeah, so Black has to come back first before taking that point, that vital point. Yeah. And that kind yeah. of gave Black White too many liberties. Uh, and, no, and even worse. Yeah. White, I mean Black, Black's group on the bottom got captured too. Yeah, that's that's not so. good. That's not good. So, yeah. So two huge mistakes, but probably the first one already made. Ichiriki feel like terrible um, if you saw the video of Ichiriki you know during at that moment he, he kind of started fanning himself very very vigorously um, but, uh, it's just so crazy that he would he would make such a mistake and then hmm. like he has the mental resolve yeah to you know to move on from that mistake and fight yeah and get back into the game and get back into a winning position yeah. Only to throw it away again. Yeah, I mean that's got to be devastating. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean I I I listened to this um, Chinese podcast then, and he was after Ichiki had lost his game, he was a little bit dismissive towards Ichiki, uh, claiming that oh yeah you know the Japanese key say is you know only off is only so so strong you know, uh, but. Uh, he he may not have been that fair because uh, well, as we shall see what happens. Well, I mean to be to be fair to him, Choi Jong is at the time was ranked number thirty in yeah. Korea. Yeah. So, I mean, never mind the fact that that she's a woman. We, let's just ignore the fact she's a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah. If Ichiriki, if if number thirty was a bloke and Ichiriki was playing him, yeah, it's still a sh- it, like it's a shock. It would be a shock to lose. For the key say to yeah. lose to number thirty in Korea, men, men or woman. That's that's arguable, but you know, depends. Anyway. <laughs> uh, you <laughs> such a you such a troll sometimes. But yeah, but um, but let's get back to the fact that you know number thirty in Korea is a woman. It is yeah. Choi Jong, and she yeah. did win this game. Mm. That yeah. means that she reaches her first ever quarterfinal in a yeah. world major. And this is only the sixth time right. that a woman has made the quarterfinals of a world major. The previous five times mm. were Roy Nawe yep. in the 1992 Ing Cup. Right. Um, Kwa Zhuming yep. from China in the 1994 Fujitsu Cup. Right. Uh, Roy Nawe um, did it in the Samsung Cup twice in 2000 and 2001. Right. And she also did it in the LG Cup, I think it was, in 2000. Oh, wow. Crazy. So, um, 
So Roy Nawe has done it four times. Hua Ming has done it once, and now Choi Jong. So Choi Jong is the first, is the third woman to reach the quarterfinal of the World Major, and she's the first Korean woman, mm. and also the first woman to do it in since two thousand and one. So twenty one years. Yep. Now, since, um, it was last done. Yeah, that's that that's crazy. Now and, and let's not forget Sumiri. Sumiri is yet to play at this point. So we could see the fourth uh, women ever making the yeah one house. day yeah. after the third woman yeah. Yeah. to mean, reach the quarterfinal it took twenty one years mm. for for the to see the third woman achieve it and it could take one day for the next one for the for the next one yeah and she's also this is actually so um, like I said it's her first quarter f- final mm. the last Korean player to make their f- debut quarterfinal was Byun Sang-il in the LG Cup, uh, I believe, in 2019. Right. So over, th- so it's been three years since a new Korean yeah. has appeared in the quarterfinal. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I'm not sure if that's a, if that's a record um, gap yeah. between, you know, quarterfinal debuts, but mm. yeah, it, it, it sort of um, gives you an impression as as to you know perhaps there's a missing generation after Shinjin So's generation. Yeah. Of uh, you know there's there's been a bit of a lack of new talent coming in after Shinjin So in Korea maybe. Maybe. But in any case, okay. yeah, pretty historic, pretty yeah. historic day to see Choi Jong, yeah. a woman make the quarterfinal of a world major. Yeah, after all these years. So now. And then we have the other games coming up, which is Kim Ji Sok beating Xu Hao Hong by half a point. So I believe Xu Hao Hong yep. was leading by quite, quite a bit of the game. There um, was yeah, this this was a game that ebbed and flowed. Yep. Um, I, I, I my my um, Korean friend, mm. a, a, a funny story. Um, my Korean friend, I asked him to. Um, pick who was going to win in each of the round of 16 games. And for this one, he said, Zhu Ha Hong. Yeah. And I asked him why. And he said, because um, Kim Ji Sok has been in poor form. Mm. Um, you know, he hasn't done well in Jar League this year. And he's, his first game, his win seemed to be a little bit lucky. Mm. And I asked him, I asked my friend, have you seen any of Zhu Ha Hong's games? Yeah. And he said no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. it's, because, I mean, you could say you could say the exact same thing about Zhu Hao Hong, really. Yeah. So, it felt to me like it was it was anyone's game, and initially it, it looked like it was going to be Zhu Hao Hong that was winning. Mm. Um, then he um, he made a mistake around move move hundred and fifty or something like that. Yeah. Um. Wait, let's see exactly where he made a mistake. I think he played a little bit slow from move 160 onwards. Right. Um, yeah, so I think move 162, instead of playing, um, instead of just extending, he should have he should have played at the 2-2 point. Right. I think. Right. Um, but it only loses, that only loses a few points. Mm. So... Anyway, it was um, a very tense um, Yose battle, and yeah, uh, this is one of those games where you know how uh, the Taiwan Hai Feng Chi Ren, they have a YouTube channel, so they do make videos about these games. Yeah. What's funny about this this particular game was that they made a video summarizing this game, and that was about fifteen minutes long. Now, what's what's happened was really, really extremely rare. They made a second video about this game, which was also fifteen minutes long. And the second video was apparently about Xu Hao Hong telling the the commentator how if he if if he had he as Black had played a a move, and it would actually have won him the game because ultimately I think it, it went came down to this code here, which was a worth about one point. Okay. And and he he could have played a a, a move that would have um, given him a bit more code threats. <coughs> Um, which didn't happen, so um, yeah. So that was something that was quite interesting because they 
they had to make uh, two two videos like this. Um, yeah, I think it was uh, it was probably somewhere around here that he should have played the code threat. I don't want to start playing the code. Yeah, it was it was very. Um, so anyway, that's that's just this game, and and then we have Kim Ming Hyun beating Tang Wei Xin by half a point. Again, I, I do believe it was half, half a point. Oh no, uh, it was half a point. Yes, yes, it was half a point. Oh, was this another? Was this a half point win as well? Yeah, I, I do believe so. Yeah. Now, even though this was a was a half point win, now apparently Tang Wei Xin was actually. Um, quite behind going into Yose because he made a huge mistake. Oh yes, I remember um, now. Yeah, and but Pangwei he managed to kind of keep chasing the game. Now, no, no, um, Pangwei Jin's group should have died. Right. But um, King Mun messed up, messed up the kill. Right. So around move, um, so Pangwei Jin is black. Yeah. And I think around um it's very, very complicated and they were probably in Bioyomi at this point. But after move one eighty five, I think um King Myung Myunghun could have killed um Black's group on the left. Right. Hundred and eighty five. Um around here. Yeah, so this was um connecting wasn't a good move. Right. And apparently if you play H6. H6. Yeah. Oh, okay. I believe that might actually kill Black's group. Right. I don't know. I'm not sure how. Um, you in this move? Yeah, yeah. What if I just Atari? Hmm. Not, not, not quite sure, but, but anyway, um, I, I, I didn't read into it, but I do remember watching the commentary. And this is a, this is a very interesting part of the about of the game. So you see how the corner here, so Black makes this clamp, um, uh, to start a cone in the corner. Wait, 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 wait! Can you wait? Can you go back? Okay, yeah, we'll 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 go we'll go over it later. I think I may have found wow the right sequence, but but you yeah you talk about it. Okay. So this is the the part of the game where uh, Black kind of fell behind. Now, now apparently, maybe Tang Wei Xin had already realized this. Uh, at, at this point, actually, White could actually um, kind of jump down and disconnect his three stones. Um, before I couldn't do that because there were some liberty issues here. Now apparently, White could actually have jumped down somewhere around here to disconnect his um, three stones from this group. Um, so. And uh, so, so for example, uh, Tang Wei Xin could have done something like uh, play here or something. That that would kind of en eliminate that problem. Okay. So imagine, so this is one of the possible things for Tang Wei Xin to do. And maybe imagine if now they start fighting the code, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Suppose why ended up winning the code, right? For for some some other move, you know, like you know, then. Uh, then black would never play here at this point because that just looks too slow, right? Okay, uh, but let's see what happens. But he clamps first, so he's not fighting this curve. And then after a while, black realizes, hey, actually, I, I don't have enough co threat. So he, uh, uh, anyway, white ended up just killing off the co because black didn't have any severe net co threat. And then at this point, Tang Wei Xin decided that. Um, uh, okay, maybe maybe Tang Wei Xin only needed to jump after that stone was taken because he used his code thread or something like that. Then Tang Wei Xin realized, hey, actually, if White jumps down, if I play elsewhere, like you know, and White jumps down, then actually that's that's actually very really problematic for me. So what he ended up doing, he ended up connecting, playing here. And if you recall, that's exactly what you shouldn't do. If you had just play here first, you would never add this move at F two. So, um, so what <coughs> the commentator ended up saying was that um, this is like black just, you know, passing for one turn because this this F two stone is just so worthless, uh, and that's exactly what happened. And but that's how uh, Tang Wei Xin fell behind, but he managed to fight back. And Gaza, you wanted to get back to 
185 is that right to see what's happened yes yes so what's what's happened here Gaza? okay so the idea mm. honey honey um, yeah you, you you cut you, you play h6 h6 yeah atari yeah and you extend yeah in atari yeah and you connect okay and i connect okay and then you play j2 j2 okay does that does that work uh, oh, and the yes. idea is that black still doesn't have enough eyes yeah so it doesn't work anymore oh okay yeah. it's pretty crazy isn't it yeah okay um didn't realize that hey, actually once you connect this jump works again yeah okay i see okay that's crazy hmm ai says ai says it kills black yeah. <laughs> I, I i i'm no yeah i'm using these sequences with the help of ai by the way obviously because yeah. i'm i'm bad at go but yeah just just wanted to um yeah show what what ai was saying okay no that, um, that but apparent, apparently that h6 works it kills the group and obvi yeah. obviously kim jong hun missed it he, he didn't see it yeah so um and you know I, yeah yeah so yeah he he takes a few points and the thing is he lets black black's group live he he may have never even realized that it could have been killed yeah and that made the game the thing is though white ended up still being ahead but by the barest of margins yes um but uh, i guess what ended up happening was that despite um after time was he made that be bad mistake with the code over here uh he managed to um fight back all the way to within half a point that's still something but he ended up just losing by half a point so that's not time wasting day now um and then we we have to... uh, wait can we so can we just also um kim Young hoon yeah we said that um choi jong was the first Debut Korean to make their debut quarterfinal. Right, yeah. Over three years. Yep. Kim Young Hoon also is a debut quarterfinalist. Right. I believe. I, I, I don't think I don't think he's made a um No no actually no that's not true. He has he has made a quarterfinal um in the LG Cup, but he hasn't played the quarterfinal yet. Oh right, right. Because it was this year's LG Cup. I see. Yeah. So, so I'm actually I'm actually wrong. Cho, so, so Kim Young Hoon actually is the first Korean quarter finalist since Byun Sang Il, I believe. Yeah. Um, nice. But Choi Jong will be technically Choi Jong, or one of those two will be the first to play in a quarter final since Byun Sang Il. Right. Will to play in their first quarter final. Right. Um, yeah, it's a bit weird because obviously the LG Cup, the the round of 16 was held a few months ago, but the quarterfinals haven't happened yet. Whereas this Samsung Cup, it's sort of the whole tournament's played in two weeks. Yeah. I, I kind of prefer the Samsung Cup one. Right but there. also worth noting that all four Korean players won um, on Monday. Right. Yep. Um, so on the first, I me remember on the first day of the Samsung Cup, the first day of the round of 32, only two of the eight Korean players won. Yep. Um, this this time they had a perfect record on um, mm. on Monday. On Tuesday, only three Koreans will be playing because only seven Koreans made the round of sixteen. Right. But um, a couple of them are expected to win. Mm. Um, shall we go over those games? Yep. So let's look at Sinjin So versus Fantin Yu. Now, this is one of those games where I think it was reasonably close the whole game there was not in terms of points right in terms of points now but what's what's scary was that uh, according to the commentary Sinjin Soi was very confident exact he, he kind of knew exactly when he was ahead now in this game Sinjin Soi is white Fanting Yu is uh, black so kind of Sinjin Soi played in a way that um, where, where he was like okay I knew I'm ahead right here so he kind of just 
uh, pulls back, you know, makes safe moves, and, and ended up winning the game by a fairly slim margin of one and a half points. So, yeah, you see here, Sinjin So is already making very solid moves at this point in the game. Like, as almost feels like he's, he's already ahead because obviously, to respond to this, you could uh, play here. That will give you a few more points. You can even think about things like attaching because if this white group gets strong, then this black group gets weak, then you can attack it more. But he ends up playing with this the most solid move here. So venting you just compresses the corner a bit. Um, so just very very simple stuff like this, and it, there was no at no point was it very uh, was was the point difference differential very big. But it just seems like Sinjin So, for whatever uh, like reason, was able to, able to assess the situation very accurately and basically ended up winning this thing by just half a, one and a half points. Not by very much, but he, he if it felt like he had control over the whole game. And that's yeah, it really yeah, <laughs> it really didn't seem yeah. like your, your typical Shinjin So game, like sort of aggressive, yeah. a, a spectacle really. Yeah, is is typical game he he seemed to be yeah very measured yep a very um controlled on occasion it seemed like he played a less aggressive move yeah more of a more of a patient mm. move yeah um yeah and like you said he, he it, it seemed like he always knew that he he was ahead yeah um which which was it, it made me. Th it made me think. You know, maybe he's playing. You know, because obviously the the last two Samsung Cups, he's reached the final and um mm. and failed to 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 win the title. Mm. And you wonder if you know maybe he's he's like he's even more focused mm. this time than in like any other tournament that he's been in, and he's he's just so determined to reach the final again. Yeah, and and get over that last hurdle that mm. you know he's in this case he he wasn't he wasn't taking any risks if he didn't have to. Yeah, now it would be a very very scary if Sinjin So knew that he was a hit that early in the game, and it was basically he has superhuman uh, judgmental abilities, and that's yes, kind of, that's kind of how Li, Li Chang Ho won all the, all his games in his heyday. But uh, if Sinjin So is like this, and basically. The word that a lot of the Chinese commentator used to describe Sun Jin So is um, scary, uh, in terms of how he approached this game. Um, we may we may see more of this uh, going forward, but whatever it is, Sun Jin So played very confidently and won this game by just one and a half points. It was so close that they ended up filling the last dummy. So that's Sun Jin So progressing to the um, to the uh, this will be the quarterfinals. Yes. And then yeah. we have Yang Dingxin playing Xu Chaoyuan. Now, now this is the only game without a Korean player in it. The only um, round of yeah. sixteen game. Yeah. Without a Korean. Now, Ichiriki Ryo mm. has already lost. So Japan are down to two players. Yeah. Um, Xu Chaoyuan is one of them, but he is playing. You know, one of China's juggernauts, yeah. Yang Dingxin. Mm -hmm. um, very consistent player. Yeah. Um, in in world majors, mm. um, yeah. I'm not sure if they've played before. Maybe they have, uh, uh, but I don't know what the result was. Yeah, I'm not, I'm um, not, really, not really sure if they they have, but um, yeah. So, but what what do you have to say about this game? Now, in, in in this game, this was a very very fighty game. Apparently, Xu Chaoyuan's style is very fighty, and. In this game, Yang Dingxin is white, Xu Chaoyuan is black. Now, for whatever reason, Xu Chaoyuan decides to take Yang Dingxin on and starts this complicated fight uh, right here. So, uh, black's into two groups, white's into two groups. But of course, uh, black stones are inside white's um, framework over here, so it does seem a bit dangerous. But let's see how this fight develops. Now, basically, because this fight was started by uh, Xu Chaoyuan and basically Yang Dingxin in this case doesn't look like he's afraid of the fight at all and by this point Black is in, is in, is in quite a bit of trouble uh, but this group is not alive there's a cutting point here there's, there's still this group that's kind of hanging around here and Yang Dingxin only has 
one weak group to deal with in the corner is probably life because you can Atari here or connect here. Um, so at this point, Black's in a little bit of trouble. Uh, now this this there's one point here where uh, a lot of the commentators were a little bit not were, were kind of not sure why Xu Chaoyuan made the tiger's mouth because uh, when he did that, imagine if white extends down here, then that's kind of is sente against this group. And so, mm. uh, which means that if this one stone here is sente, then uh, white's corner is already alive. Um, so, but, uh, but otherwise, normally in this shape, you need to add one more move to live. So, so commentate, a lot of commentators said that that was one of Xu Chaoyuan's mistakes. And, but by this point, I just remember the commentator, the Chinese one, uh, on Tianyuan TV said that um, after all these fights, yeah, you see, it, whatever, this, this thing did end up happening. So this this is actually Sente against his black group. So black has to add one more move, and then the ending can cut. So it it just doesn't look good for uh, Xu Chaoyuan at all, because he hasn't really gained anything. He's still running a very weak group. But whatever... Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think by this point, the the commentator was basically saying uh, this this game is, yeah, like Xu Chaoyuan basically has no chance um, at this point. It's just too too hard. Nothing for worked. Yeah. Nothing worked for Xu Chaoyuan. It's just nothing. So it just kind of resigned at this point. It was basically, if you look at it, Black probably doesn't have anything, and this group died. Um, so yeah, so it's a good game for Xu, uh, for Yang Dingxin. It, it just feels like even though Xu likes to fight yeah but by, by the way those those four yeah. white stones um yeah they they live and the black stones die right cool because white can white can escape by Atari now yeah right, uh, uh, underneath yeah yeah, yeah. In, in case anyone was wondering <laughs> yeah very good um yeah no it's it's um it's not a good day for Xu Chaoyuan. It just feels like that, even though he likes to fight, he's just not as good at fighting at, at, as Yang Dingxin, or maybe he chose the wrong moment to fight. Uh, whatever it may be, it's a good win for Yang Dingxin. So he he makes it, he makes it to the next round, very good. And then we have the big one, Li Hyun Jin versus Nakamura Sumire. Yeah, and this one was perhaps the most one of the could have been the most highly anticipated, at least among. The Go fans that I yeah. socialize with. Um, yeah. So Nakamura Sumire, obviously the um, you know the pro the Japanese prodigy. Everyone yeah. knows who she is. Yeah. And people were saying, you know, this is this is um, she's got a real chance of winning this game. Like she couldn't have had a better opponent, yeah. like a more beatable opponent than Lee Hyung Jin. Yeah. So just um. I'll, I'll I'll mention I'll mention this now. So I I, I talked to a, I, I have a um, Korean friend of mine who knows more about the Korean professional scene than I do, much yeah. more than I do. Yeah, and he's very familiar with just about all of the players. Mm. So I asked him, "Do you know who Lee Hyung Jin is?" Yeah, and he said, "No, never heard of him before." Yeah, and basically, he's not a so he's not a Jar League player. No. But he's not even a Korean Baduk League player. Now, in, in Korea, they have the Baduk League. There are yeah. nine teams. Right. And each team has five players. So that's like nearly 50 players. Mm. And Lee Hyung Jin's not even good enough for that league. Yeah. Um, he's I think he's ranked about 75 in Korea. Right. And But when he when he was in playing in the qualifiers, he was ranked outside the top 100. He gained a lot of rating points. From winning lots of games in the qualifiers, right? So that's why he's he's seventy five. But uh, I'm not sure if he's ever played in the Baduk League, right? Um, yeah, he's he's really not one of the the big name players yeah. in Korea. And yeah, my friend didn't even know who he was. Yeah. So, um, but he did. I believe so. He did beat Yu Zhi Ying, the Chinese yeah. women's number one, yeah. in the first round. Mm. And but yeah, this was of of. If Samira could 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 um, beat anyone, it would be this 
this person. Yes, yes. Lee Hyung Jin. So, so will we see Samira go even further, make the quarterfinal? I mean, everyone's hoping so, but I guess it didn't really happen. But people did get very excited. I think it's around this point in the game where apparently Sumire is uh, winning. Uh, AI says AI's win rate for Sumire would be at around eighty percent, somewhere around this point. When black, oh, black is Lee Hyun Jin, white is Sumire. So when black kind of played here uh, to kind of make this group alive, I guess black has designs on you know this white group because you know it's technically not alive, so you know he can make it on jump in. Um, but but uh, it was. Shimir was about 80% according to AI. So uh, if uh, maybe maybe for like someone like Sinjin, so he can maybe close out at 80%. But um, I guess it wasn't to be for Tsumire because um, she ended up letting Black you know, did, do what I said, which is kind of uh, chase this group around. And so I think Sumire at some point had a chance to make it just live really simply but she kind of missed that chance and let black kind of attack her which and this is where she kind of lost quite a few points when she tried to connect here i guess she's trying to tell she thought that this would be sente black has to cut disconnect her but uh i was watching this uh with together with the with a pro and the pro immediately recognized that hey you can actually just atari here which is exactly what lee hun jin did and so, <clears throat> so oh, yeah, right. because if if uh, if if black disconnect and white can push through here and capture these stones somehow, yeah. But black can actually tarry first and then disconnect, and white this push through doesn't work anymore. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Maybe Sumire just missed that. But what that means is that um, she just um, <clears throat> ended up just playing. A, 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 a go team move because after uh, pulling back black can fix it, the shape by playing here apparently which is sente because black can cut here so basically what that means is this move just becomes a go team move basically for Sumire she lost the initiative at this point and that's when her win weight dropped quite a bit um, I don't remember what happened or if there were any other mistakes after that but yeah, Sumire ended up just losing this game. Um, so that it was, even though she was leading at eighty percent, some uh, at one point, she just ended up um, not doing enough to. Uh, yeah, I think she only lost by a couple of points. Right, I think the result was one point, one and a half point. So yeah, one and a half. Right. It was just it was yeah. I mean, it, it, she could have won this, but it, it wasn't to be. <clears throat> A missed opportunity, perhaps, but yes. hard to say if if there was still. I think, like, even if she played the right moves, even mm. if she didn't play that Gote move, there was yeah. still there were still complications in the position. That yeah, you still couldn't say who would have won or lost. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, Lee Hyung Jin, um, he played well. Yep. And um, unfortunately, um, Sumire, I, I believe, was the last remaining Japanese player. So yep. So no Japanese players make the quarterfinals. Mm-hmm. Um, that seems to be a, a bit of a running theme. Of course, um, actually, Shibano ha- has made the quarterfinal of the LG Cup this year, yeah. which is yet played. Mm. But other than that, I don't think there are any Japanese players. That none of no Japanese players made the quarterfinals of the Chunlan Cup, I believe, and none made the quarterfinal of the Samsung Cup. It's a bit of a bit of an unfortunate sort of um, recurring theme. Yeah. Uh, I guess yeah. Ichiriki Rio probably should should have made it, but um, he made those mistakes. Yeah, so that was not yes, and Taiwan, of course, Taiwan's um, only representative was Zhu Hao Hong. Yeah, but Taiwan is is eliminated as well. Yeah, which means once again, it's it's going to be either a Korean or a Chinese player winning a world major. Yep, um, not not really much of a surprise. No. And uh, now, uh, now, after this game, there's only one Chinese player yet to play, which is Tan Xiao. He had the unenviable task of taking on Park Chun Wan. And uh, now, in, in so, and they, and they play, and 
surprise, surprise, Park Jun Han actually ended up winning this one together. So, and Tan Chao is black in this game, and Park Jun Han is white. And I don't actually remember too much about this game. I think it was just yeah, Tan Chao just ended up having not not enough points. And unfortunately, I yeah, unfortunately, I was um, focused on other games because all four all four games that are the games that are played at, on, the, on the same day, they're actually they actually play at the same time. Yeah. So, like I said, there were four games played on Monday, four games played on Tuesday. They all start at the same time, so they're all going on simultaneously. Yeah. And I think this was the game that I that I looked at the least. Yeah. I also think that this game may have been the last one to finish. I, I feel that they got to Bioyomi mm. very early on in the game in terms of um, they did not play that many moves before they got to Bioyomi. Yeah. I think it was a very slow mm. game, but... Um, uh, I thought I, I don't really have much um, insight into this. I, I haven't really looked at the game yeah. too much. So I, I don't I don't think there's anything too remarkable about this that I didn't remember anyway, but it was just that uh, Park Jun Hwan was just too good for uh, Tan Chao. So Yeah, I, I don't think yeah, I think it I think in the end Tan Chao did resign, but I think in the end it was only like one and a half or two and a half points. Right, right. So it's not um, a, the difference. Yeah, it's not, yeah. not a huge difference in it. But whatever happens Gaza, do you know what that means after looking through all the results? Um, what only, does it mean? There's only one Chinese player left. Oh wow! I all so, okay. All seven Korean players yeah. in the round of sixteen won. Yeah, that that's right. And and um, so what that means is uh, the only time, uh, well, the only Chinese player who made it through was Yang Dingxin, who actually had to play a, a Japanese player. Uh, so what that means is in the quarterfinals, there's seven Koreans and only one Chinese player left. So this is so very that's dangerous. um yeah that's quite remarkable. That this is the so um after the first day mm. of the Samsung Cup, only six Koreans lost right on the very first day, mm. and we were thinking that this could be a pretty uh, sorry tournament for Korea, mm. and they've completely reversed it. They obviously uh. They they gave themselves a good kick up the backside and mm. and have just blown away the competition. All seven Koreans that re- made it to the round of sixteen end up winning. Mm. So you've got and then, so then you've got players like Shin Min Jun who lost in the first round. Yeah. Um. Who's, and they're not getting they're not getting to enjoy any of the fun. <laughs> no. So um. Yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy. Now. Yes. Yeah, just... So um. So. I, I believe this is the yeah this is the first time in the Samsung Cup that seven Koreans have been in the quarterfinal. Right. But it, I, we have mentioned in an earlier podcast that this actually happened in the Kuksu Mountain International this year. Right. Yeah. Right. Where Zo Chenyu was the only um, Chinese player in the mm. quarterfinal. Yep. And it also happened about twenty years ago in the LG Cup. Yeah. Where seven Koreans um, were in the quarterfinal, and in both of those cases, the other, the eighth player in the quarterfinal was a Chinese player, and and they lost their quarterfinal. So it was mm. in both cases, it was an all Korea semi final. Yeah, insane. Now, I, I so, yeah, keep going, get together. So, will we see the same history repeat itself yet again? Yeah. Well, let's let let's find out. Um, now. And the, the important thing about this is that basically the, the draw, because they have to draw, and Yang Dingxin ended up drawing Choi Jong, right? And uh, I remember listening to this, this podcast, the Chinese podcast, and they, they were saying that, oh, lucky Yang Dingxin drew uh, Choi Jong, you know, otherwise, you know, China would be in a, you know, greater danger of uh, not having. A player in the semis and what that would mean is that all four players in the semi would be korean now was yang dingxin drawing choi jong actually lucky well you have to say choi jong by rating is the second weakest player yeah in the field yep um the weakest player would be lee hyung jin mm. um okay so are we going to be looking at so this game was actually not played so the the quarterfinals were played on wednesday and thursday yeah this game was played on the Thursday. Yeah. 
right? But I guess we're going to cover it first because it's Choi Jong. Choi Jong. Mate. So Choi Jong is black and yeah. Yang Ting Ching is white. And like, look at, so look at this. Wait, mm. go back, go back to first, dip, yeah, here. Like, look, look at that. <laughs> it looks pretty, it looks pretty um, standoffish, don't you think? Yeah. Um, yeah, um, this could like this could just be normal fuseki, but yeah. yeah, it's it seems very peaceful at the moment. Like each like each player is sort of Getting waiting started. for the other player to sort of yeah. take the initiative and play an aggressive move. Yeah, so um, Yang Dingxin as white here, you know, takes some influence. Choi Jong takes the corner, and then Choi Jong does the same on the other side, takes some influence, and let the other player get the corner. Um so no and then and then the invasion happened and so they kind of start a fight and now this is I thought where the first point in the game where there was gonna be a serious fight and it when I was watching the commentary all of this fighting over here is actually very very complicated even though AI says that white has some pretty good chances here but kind of the engine kind of never played the AI moves uh, the first choice AI moves and whatever ended up happening uh, you see that uh, Yang Dingxin actually ended up just um, sacrificing some 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 groups there um, so they fought finding this code and then Choi Jong made this as a code threat Yang Dingxin just finished it off and uh, now Yang Dingxin just ended up um, now apparently this move over here is actually very significant because this tightens white's liberties and so therefore uh, when black attaches here uh, these three stones will get captured so uh, there's no way to save these three stones if black gets sente somehow and attaches here uh, so Choi Jong played really well to find this move and now I think according to the commentary I think actually there's, there's a there's a there's a very clever move that anything could have played, which is here, attached to these two stones. That will set up some kind of capturing race um, of the middle and, and this group, and indirectly helping these three stones because white black would be too busy dealing with the corner here. But uh, Yang Ningxin does to kind of just sacrifice these, these stones, which means that all the RGs were, were, were gone. And, and then at this point, basically most of the commentary was saying that, yeah, Actually, uh, AI was suggesting that uh, Y can have can jump here. This jump is actually really really powerful because it threatens to connect under. Wait, Y can jump where? Uh, let me just show you on a Kifu. Um, this is move ninety seven. Uh, this is. I'm just loading up the Kifu Kifu ninety seven. So where are we? Okay, so that's some of the common. Basically, this is this is what AI recommends. Uh, white can jump here, right? So, for example, uh -huh. if black protects the corner, then obviously can um uh, no sorry, can connect under, right? Saving these groups. So 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 imagine if black kind of stops this, right? Then actually this this attachment still works, and this jump helps it this attachment because. Um, because now you have this connect under it kind of works in connection with this this um, this jump this jump works in connection with this attach and the com the commentator uh, Joe Ray Young who was who's streaming this says that this kind of local play this clever local play is where Sin Jin So and players like Ke Jie shine so you know but he's skeptical whether Yang Ningxin can find this move because this is actually a move that's recommended AI, and I guess what's happened was that um, Yang kind of didn't really go for this. He just played like Atari here and extend, which was what Joe Ray Yang was saying that most pros would probably think about and let Choi Jong push down here. And uh, extending down was probably Yang Ding, you know, Yang Ding Jin's losing moves because it was actually not necessary to extend down. He could probably just play somewhere around here, but he extended down, which happens to be Gote. And you see mm -hmm. what happens here. Um, it attaches. There's no way for Black to save these three stones now, um, unfortunately. But Yang Ningxin finally decides to play this. 
uh, which which has been recommended by AI for a while. But I'm not sure if after Black added this one move here, if this still wouldn't work. But anyway, it it um, after playing off this, it yeah, Yangling Xin ended up losing all of these stones as well after Black play. I guess I guess Yangling Xin's idea playing here was that. Uh, what he did later on in the game, which is kind of just pulled his stone back. Um, but why not play at b5 instead of b4? b5? Instead, if I move, um, if I move 104. Like this? Yeah. Just capture. Uh, right. Yeah. I guess he played here so that he can uh, later on pull this, uh, pull, pull this one stone back. Uh, like that which is actually what happened in the game um uh, so i guess but i guess one... i guess at this point like yeah <clears throat> yeah if he if he wasn't seeing the um the o one one move right yeah 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 um yeah, yeah. but yeah. i guess it, at this point i guess yang ling his only chance is to capture this group over here so I guess that's maybe why Yang Ling Jin thought that this would be somewhat sente because after pulling this, uh, this group has no eyes. And, uh, right. Yes. Yeah, so yes. maybe maybe that was what Yang Ling Jin was thinking. But uh, at this point, there's no way for Yang Ling Jin to do anything except kill this group, especially after Choi Chong pulled back and capture all of this, like all five stone here just gone, pure points for black. Yeah. But did Yang Ling Jin manage to kill this group? Oh, okay. Firstly, it threatens the corner, of course, to and then make this really thick. And then finally, he goes for the uh, for the kill. Goes for the kill. And Choi Jong was in Byoyomi at this point. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Choi Jong was so, in Byoyomi quite a bit. Yeah. So she did have to make her moves relatively quickly, I guess. Relatively quickly, and yeah. you know, it seemed it seemed a little bit, you know, scary. Like, yeah. how is Black going to make uh, two eyes? Because now Black's been cut off. Black. Yeah. Black can't connect. On the right, yeah. But black has to live locally. Yes. Um, I guess Yang Ling Xin, maybe, I think maybe at this point it's already alive. Um, yeah. So. But anyway, whatever happened, Choi Jong ended up um, living. So Yang Ling Xin is that. Yeah, Choi Jong. Yeah. Yeah, Choi Jong ended up making um, two eyes. But for a Q player like me, it's not so obvious, but. Yeah, yeah, she. There's one eye here, and there's one eye here. There's two eyes. Yes. Yeah. Well, there is now. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess it just wasn't Yang Ding Chin's day. I guess uh, after uh, after capturing all of this, Choi Jong's way ahead, um, and Yang Ding Chin just couldn't really come back any further. But it, it, I mean, I don't think Yang Ding Chin played all that badly, except he didn't see some, you know, local combination over here that would have given him, um, <coughs> put him back to even ground like he wouldn't be leading if he even saw that i think but uh charge yeah, just play too good yeah no this isn't like this is the game of your life yeah i, I would say uh, like she just played incredibly well she and she seems to have a strategy where she um she plays solidly and patiently at the beginning mm. and sort of entices black to make an like entices her opponent sorry to make mm. an overplay yeah that's that's what I feel may have happened. Like she just played calmly, solidly, um, you know, made sure she 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 didn't put her groups at risk mm. and make her opponent, who's you know a lot higher ranked than her, think, you know, why am I not winning yet? Yeah. Maybe maybe Yang Dingxing was feeling, you know, I should be I should be dominating by now. I, I'm yeah. I'm higher ranked, and, yeah. and maybe you know maybe he went a bit. He played a bit too too aggressively yeah. or he made an overplay and yeah. you know he lost a lot of stones in the bottom right and yeah. you know maybe he just didn't play his natural game yeah no um it, you know like what what whatever happened here this is a little bit of a shock because obviously yang ding Xin would be often considered like a top five player in china um and i don't think he's ever lost to choi jong before i, I well, I, I will I, I will tell you one statistic I know. Yeah. I looked up Choi Jong's record against... So Choi Jong, in the round of 32, yeah. she beat Sara at Sushi. Yeah. In the round of 16, she beat Ichiriki Ryo. Yeah. In quarterfinal, she beat Yang Ding Jin. Yeah. Uh, she'd never played any of them before. 
Right. Crazy. So, yeah, I mean, Yang Ting had never lost to Choi Jong before, but he'd never played Choi Jong before. This this was this was her first time playing all three of those players. Mm. Now, later on, that, Yang that Ting... also that also means, by the way, that also yeah. means, by the way, that there are there are no more non Koreans yeah. left in the Samsung Cup. Yang Dingxin was the last remaining player, and history repeated repeats itself. Seven out of eight. Um, Koreans in the quarterfinal, and it, it, it'll end up being four Koreans in the semifinal. Yep, and I think ended, well, Yang Lingxing ended up later on commenting on Kerjie's uh, social media, saying that yeah, Choi Jong is actually really strong. Um, so, so there you go, another scalp in Choi Jong's uh, trophy. Oh, and... that also means she's made a semifinal. Yes, mm. the she's the second woman mm. to make a world major semi-final the only other time it happened was in the 1992 in cup by yeah. rui Nawe. yeah so this is the first time in 30 years 30 yay. years yay that she's it's been a long long time. long time coming yeah but yes. is, that's cr- that's crazy absolutely yeah. crazy it's it's crazy I, I think this is this is the moment when people have started discussing about whether Choi Jong is the greatest of all time women player. Uh, maybe a bit premature. Yes, yes. I there were there were definitely in 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 some groups I saw people were were out yeah discussing um, is is she the greatest of all time women's player? But yeah. with all due respect, she's having an incredible tournament. But yeah. uh, with all due respect, I think people need to people need to read up on Rui Rui Nawe's career. Yeah. Um, she she was a phenomenal she was a phenomenal player and um, this is I don't think this is the podcast to discuss Rui Nawe um, right but uh, yeah but but yeah I I would encourage people to do to do their own research for the time being yeah um, maybe maybe I will do a little bit of research myself yeah um, and then I can enter the argument but I, I I thoroughly believe that Rui Nawe is the greatest women's player of all time yeah. Um, uh, but but that being said, this is for someone to replicate her achievement of making a world major semi final is yeah, still really, really incredible. And, and it, it is a, it is, it is good for women's go. It's good yeah. for go in general. Yep, hundred percent. And yeah, yeah, just it's just been an amazing tournament. Yeah. So crazy. Let that that game was on a, on Thursday. Shall yeah. we look at the two Wednesday games? Yes. Now the. To, on a Wednesday, uh, well, the the draw was Sinjin So versus, uh, versus Park Jun Hwan, and some of our Korean friends were saying how this is pos- possibly the worst possible draw for Korea, uh, because you, you get your top two players, presumably, are uh, playing in the round of in in, in the quarterfinals. So uh, that means you know, imagine if one of them. Well, one of the top players get knocked knocked out, but Yang Dingxin made it through, and then you know, one one less strong player for Yang Dingxin to potentially contend with. So uh, that's why they said it's possibly the worst draw, but it didn't really. Yes, matter, did because it? at this point, of course, um, Yang Dingxin had yet to play yeah. Choi Jong. Yeah. But regardless, this is a a rematch of the Samsung Cup final last year, so Shin Jin and Park Chun Wan will not be recontesting the Samsung Cup final because they're playing each other in the quarterfinal. That's just the luck of the draw. Yeah. Um, but this is a rematch. Obviously Shin Jin So is looking for revenge. Yeah. Um and Yeah. And well uh, as I think as people already know, he did get his revenge. Yeah. Or well, Shin Jin So is white in this game. And Park Chung Hwan is black. Now again, this is one of those games where the commentators started using the word scary to describe Shin Jin So because uh, very early on he's decided that he's 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 ahead by by a few points and he, he didn't need to do that much. Um so I think they started this um fight over here and I think it ended up being such that um Shin Jin So as uh Park Chung Hwan as Black was only behind by a little bit. 
um, but but um, and uh, it was only a few points in it. I think uh, at this point Park Jun Hwan is already as black as a little bit behind. So Sin Jin So makes this tickle over here. Obviously, uh, black can Atari on the outside, and white will connect, and black can connect. And there's some RG here with this, and then black can maybe jump into here. And so, so if you play in a safe way, then black will lose a few points. So a lot of commentators were saying, okay, um, it doesn't look like black attiring on the inside will work. So black will likely attire on the outside and just lose a few points. But Park Jun Hwan decided that that was going to, that was going to lose him the game because he is a little bit behind. So he decided to go for this sequence where he Atari on the outside. Mm. And left white in. Now at this point, you can see a like a scatter of white stones everywhere, but it's not obvious how white can make any of this work together. Yes. In fact, like I can imagine if I play white, I, all my white stone could get captured. You know, possible. You know, but uh, let's 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 look at how Sin Jin so handles this situation. Let's see what magic he comes up with. Does it tickle on this side? Says, do you want me to give me give me some point or, or let me build a base? Okay, so and then and then he goes on the other side, Atari's. And all of a sudden, this black group is under a little bit of pressure. But um, it's not gonna die. Um, so anyway. So then now white goes on goes to the other side again, puts some more stones a little bit everywhere. Oh, yeah, Taris. Now, this is the point where the commentator says, Sin Jin So just plays, plays so well over here. Now, notice that this, 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 at this point, there's only two white stones here. There's three stones here. Looks like they are captured. Yeah. But, yeah. but look at what Sin Jin So does. He, Taris, deliberately sacrifices these stones. So he gets one sente move, two sente moves, and then now connects back because. There's an invisible sente moves that he, he could have played here. So by sacrificing these stones, he connected everything back. Crazy. Was yeah. that a, was that a worthwhile exchange? Uh yeah. Yeah. This this is much where Amazing. Really saves it saves all of this by just giving up by just sacrificing here. So the the commentator had no words to say except just Sinjin So just plays so well over here. It's beautiful. Okay, so that's that's one thing. Uh, so he saved all of these stones. Now he decides to move some of these stones out, putting more pressure on black. And connects. Push. Push. When he harnesses in, apparently there's, there's actually Sinjin, a Park Jun Hwan couldn't cut. And at this point, it's just pure reading. But I honestly can't give you a technical analysis, but just I just watch and be amazed. So Sinjin so just tarries. Comes out. Uh, apparently this this is uh, now at this point of course uh, white can connect back or push here and atari and capture these stones and white can at any point atari here and connect and threaten these stones so uh white's got a lot of ways to escape and what's more is white can actually net this stone and still have all of those options still available uh, and uh what's incredible is that from a smatter of Stones seemingly randomly scattered everywhere. Sin Jin So managed to destroy the territory here and basically win the capturing race versus these black stones here. In in my opinion, yeah. in my opinion, I feel that if Park Jun Wan wasn't playing Shin Jin So, he would yeah. have played it. He would have because Park Jun Wan resigned at this point. Yeah, I feel if he wasn't playing Shin Jin So, he would have played a little bit longer. Right, right, right. Because there is some. There is still some complications. Like, for instance, you could you could play smack bang in the middle of that white group on the right. For instance, remove the ice, remove the ice base. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, there. I, I think I think the issue is that uh, this white move he he is sente. Um. So that's so white can create one eye here. I think. So. Uh, okay. It might. Yeah. So I I still I still think that. Park Jun Wan may have played a couple more moves if if it wasn't Shin Jin So. Right, right. He um, seems to uh, he seems to f have sort of a well, maybe not a fear but a respect of Shin Jin So and his um mm. his ability in positions like this and yeah he felt that 
no point playing on because he wasn't going to win. Right, right, right. Yeah, but uh, you know, it's it is it is crazy, you know, how you know, Sun Jin So managed to just use pure reading to to overcome Park Jun Hwan over here. It just it it just the way he made all of these stones, the scatter of stones work together, uh, eventually. Um, so, but anyway, uh, they all stem from just Park Jun Hwan choosing the Atari over here. S since he sensed that he was only a little bit behind, but this is again uh, not Park Jun Hwan's day, and Sun Jin So managed to progress to the uh, <coughs> to the semis from here. So Park Jun Hwan will not be defending his Samsung Cup title. No, no, and this could be Sun Jin So's. Uh, you know, third time in a three third year in a row making uh, the final of the uh, El Samson Cup. He he does have a chance of making the final, right? Yes, he's he's made he's won his quarterfinal, so that puts him in the semi final. Yeah. The other quarterfinal played on Wednesday was Kim Min Hoon Kim versus, Hoon versus Kim Ji Sok. Yeah. And um, this was. Yeah, a, a very good game by Kim Young Hun, who yeah. was white in this game. I don't, I honestly cannot recall too much about this game. Is there anything else? Anything you want to mention about this game, Gaza? No, nothing really. Uh, okay, yeah. Kim Ji Sok was never winning. Well, never really ahead. Um, right. And I, and I just remember uh, Kim Ji Sok as black here ended up getting his uh, dragon into trouble. Um, mm. so, so what ended up happening was that um, Kim Ming Hyun ended up just um, threatening the dragon and basically because you notice this, this black dragon over here um, is all surrounded by white now and white managed to just cut it off and ended up I believe the well, one of the dragons died yeah yeah okay I think this is where it ended um I think, uh, I think the dragon didn't exactly die, but I think white just has too many points, and I think black needed to kill white. Or oh, actually, this dragon is he is in trouble, as well. So, yeah, um, yeah. I think it's just not not enough points for Kim Ji Sok. So Kim Ming Hyun won this one, so he made makes the semi. And this is Kim Young Hyun's first awesome. semi final yep. in his career. Yeah. Um, and also worth noting, in the quarterfinals, Park Chun Won and Kim Ji Sok, they were the only former Samsung Cup champions remaining in this competition. Right. So both of them lost on Wednesday, so we are guaranteed a new champion. New Samsung Cup champion. A new yeah. Samsung Cup champion. Yeah. Um, so Shin Jin So and Kim Young Hun both progressed on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I should also point out, this is actually Kim Young Hun's first Samsung Cup. Right. So to make the semi-final is pretty impressive. Um, mm. um, a apart from um, Yoda Nor Norimoto, who won the very first Samsung Cup, the only mm. the only person to win the Samsung Cup um, in their first tournament was Guzi Hao. Right. Uh, fi uh, five or so years ago. He won the first time he qualified. Mm. Um, so Kim Young Hoon is looking to, to emulate that. Yep. Um, now, on Thursday, we already said Choi Jong won. Mm. Obviously, she makes her first um, semi-final. Yeah. So that means that the last remaining quarterfinal is Byun Sang-il versus Lee Hyung Jin. And uh, to nobody's surprise, Byun Sang-il uh, had won this game. Um, now, Byun sang is white. I don't remember too much about this game unless you have said something you wanted to mention about this game. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember this game at all. Let me see if yeah. I can... Yeah, I think. Uh, to be honest, I didn't even. No, I don't remember this game. Yeah, I, I think it, it was just ended up being that Byung Sang Il was just too good. Um, yeah. Byung Sang Il is white yeah, in this Byung game. Byung Sang white. So, yeah, it just ended up um, beating uh, Lee Hyun Jin. Lee Hyun Jin. Um, yep. Still a very good tournament for Lee Hyun Jin. It, this is not his um, first ever world major. He did play in one of the BC card. Cup competitions, right? Um, 
I'll just quickly see how he went um, in that competition, the BC Card Cup. Right. So he played in the third BC Card Cup and he lost his first game. So, so this is his, definitely his best result in a world major, making the quarter finals. Very good for him, but that's mm. where it ends. Where it ends. Um, so therefore, the semi finalist uh, Choi Jong, Byung Sang Hye. Sin Jin Zhou and Kim Ming Hyun. And it just so happens and, that the draw happened and the Choi Jong was drawn against Byung Sang Hye and Sin Jin Zhou was drawn against Kim Ming Hyun. Yes, and so interestingly enough, um, mm. Choi Jong and Byung Sang Hye, they played their quarterfinal on Thursday and then they were drawn to play their semi final against each other on Friday. Mm. Whereas Shin Jin Zhou and Kim Ming Hyun, they played. On Wednesday in the quarterfinal, yep. but their semi-final was scheduled on the Saturday. So Byun sang and Choi Jong got no, no rest. rest day, yep. while Shin Jin and Kim Young Hoon they had two days of rest. Right, and that's just that's just the because of the randomness of the draw. It right. was completely random. Mm. At the very yeah. least, um, both of the both of the games, the the players had the same amount of rest. Yeah. So, at least that was fair, but. Yep. It it wouldn't it didn't necessarily have to be like that. It, right, it could but, have been like Shin Jin So versus Byun Sang Il or something like that. Yeah, right. But it wasn't, and so um, on Friday, yep, we had Choi Jong versus Byun Sang Il. Now I've already mentioned that Choi Jong, um, she'd never played Sadatsushi, Ichiriku Ryu, or um, Yang Ding Shin mm. before this Samsung Cup. Yep, she has played Byun Sang Il in the past. Yes. Um, she she's played Byun Sang Il five times in the past, and Byun Sang Il won all five games. Yeah. So, um, of course, Byun Sang Il also is the number two in Korea. Yeah. So it was it was widely expected that this was the end of the road for Choi Jong. Yeah. Now both of these players actually are looking to make their first world major final. Byun Sang Il, this is only his second. Um, semi-final yeah. in a world major. Mm. He's, he kind of underperforms in international competition, it seems. Right. But this is his second time making a semi-final in a world major, and it looks like he has a strong chance to make his first ever world major final. Yeah. Because he is playing Choi Jong. So at this point, I believe at this point, the the November rankings um, had been released. For Korea and Choi Jong, so Choi Jong's now ranked number twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. Byun Sang Il is ranked number two. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, um, you know, a bit of a ranking difference. But how did the game? How did this game actually go? Of course, it doesn't matter what the ranking difference or your past head-to-head record is. It only mm-hmm. matters the result of the game that you play. Yeah. Now I would I would say that after I, I, when I watched the commentary, um. Basically, the Chinese pro doing the commentary was basically saying the way Byung Sang Yu played today was not to the standard of what you would expect of a pro. Now, that's that's pretty harsh, you know. Criticism. That is quite a strong comment. Yes, that's very, 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 very strong. So, I don't know really what actually had gone. Now, Bu- now for, for the record, Byung Sang Yu is white. Yeah, Byung Sang is white. Cho Jong Jung- is black. Yeah. Now, I mean, nothing really is wrong up to, up to, even 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 here. Um, so, uh, now, um, I think this is move fifty was when it started to go wrong for Byung Sang Il. Uh, basically, the pro was saying that this movie isn't that valuable. Maybe White could maybe con- consider just connecting the groups, or just jumping out here. So this direction is more important than that because that. That really doesn't uh, really uh, damage Black too much in terms of what it does, but he does that, and then Cho Jong played the right move, which is to move out. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is the next move was um, the next. <clears throat> this move was criticized by the pros even more because basically they were saying that clearly this this clamp doesn't work. It's it's very clear this move, clamp doesn't work. Um, because what black can just move out and look after what happens after moving out. This white group is now in a little bit of trouble. This white group is not fully alive. 
and this is white stone just standing over here and if this black group I run if this white group runs out and this white black group runs out with it then this stone gets, gets damaged so it's already at this point I Byung Sang is in a little bit of trouble because he's, he's, he's like running three separate groups and neither of them are very very very, very strong so uh, whatever happened, he decides to cut white off anyway. Now, 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 can we just have a look at this move number 62? Yeah. Now, this move was very much disliked by AI. Right. I believe it, they he, they just wanted him to connect. Yeah. To, yeah, that's kind to, of the um, right thing to do, yeah. Yeah, to connect, protect the cutting point mm. and prevent the cut. Mm. And I'm guessing that white still has enough maneuvering to... Um, yeah, in the middle. Yeah. To do something with that to do something with that white group. Yes. But Byun Sang-il did not see it that way. Mm. And so he, he extended. The problem was Choi Jong knew what to do, it seemed. Yeah. Now now apparently at this point, um apparently Choi Jong could just um capture these white stones. Um, maybe by just pushing out here or, or cutting here. Uh it, it, even in a capturing race, black either can live with this group or just capture white first but Choi Jong decided to play it safe that kind of seems to be a bit characteristic of her play during this tournament just to just to play it a bit safer you don't have yes. to go for the kill right away yes be more yes patient. 100% um, so she, she just, just plays the move to to get rid of all her problems so um, this white group black group is now alive so Byung Sang now has to move out his white stone, her white stones um, so she ended up just capturing uh, like a stone in the middle of the board as well so it's kind of getting worse and worse for Byung and uh, and when uh, Choi Jong puts more pressure on this one stone she's also putting pressure on this white group which isn't alive just floating in the air um, so uh, I think that's that's when Byung Sang decided that normal moves don't really work he's gonna just play really aggressively and counter attack but look at what Choi Jong does she kind of ignores it and just just flies out Putting even more pressure on this group. Um, so yeah, um, and then it and it just so happens that as yeah, as so one, so yeah, Byun Sang will get captures those two stones yeah. um, in the top left, but 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 Black doesn't care because Black's going for Black's going for the the treasure. Black's yeah. going for the big prize. Yeah, because once Black got a few stones here by sacrificing these two. Once this got stronger, he can attack this more. So, exactly. Ba basically, basically at this point, the um, the commentator was really uh, saying that yeah, Byung, Byung Sang Yeo is in deep trouble. Now, when Byung Sang Yeo played here to threaten the life and death situation of this group, Choi Jong played a beautiful move here. Uh, now, this this move apparently helps with the life and death situation over there because imagine later on if our uh, Black gets some Ataris in and tightens the liberty of this white group, then this cut here uh, basically can capture the tail. And so therefore, Black doesn't need to spend moves over here to make it alive um, if, if, if white comes down and block. If white doesn't come down and block, and for example connects, then later on Black can pull back and, and have destroyed all of the white's eyes here for this group. So this is a very, very beautiful move. It looks very far away from this group, but actually helps the life and death of this group. Anyway, so Byung Sang decided that he has to block. And what that means is Choi Jong fixed the life and death problem of this group in Sente. Crazy. So now Choi Jong goes for the kill. Uh, destroys uh, White's eyes. White's got no 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 other move but to play here to ensure the connection works. Um, yeah, so Choi... <laughs> and I think at this point, the commentator was saying that basically, you know, why can resign already? You know, it's just, just so terrible. Like this group is probably dead. But um, Byung Sang Yeo just kept playing for a bit. But it wasn't, it wasn't really Byung Stay. I think it, it, it's very clear to the to the commentator that, you know, Byung's gone. Basically, there's no, there's no coming back for him. Uh, but anyway, the now do we have do we have any video footage? Yes. Um, now this is about this. No, just just as when they were saying that the Byung is is not, you know, it's basically his chances are pretty much gone. 
Uh, you can see that AI assets that Choi Jong was leading by 17 points. And uh, what did Bion do to himself? Is that a crying, obviously? And then savagely, you know, hitting his, his, his face. This is probably more savage than what Kerje does when uh, when when Kerje makes a bad move. And guys, uh, how, how far was... how far away were they sitting next to each other? Oh yeah, so he's he's slapping himself in the face. Yeah, and it turns out they're sitting about two meters away from each other. Right, like they're literally in the same room, and they're and they're they're two meters away from each other. He just he's just slapping slapping the bejesus out of himself, and I. I Anyone who slapped themselves in the face, yeah, I've I've done it before when not not uh, not by playing a after playing a bad move, but yeah. for, for other reasons, yeah. it hurts. Yeah, <laughs> like that that genuinely hurts. Like yeah. he's he's very upset. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta feel sorry for him. It, he yeah. just just he mustn't he he just he plays bad games like this, but not not. Not, he not just, this bad. Yeah, not this bad. And yeah. he's he clearly he clearly let the nerves get to him. Yeah. Um and you just gotta feel sorry for him because he's such a talented player and he really want he obviously really, really wanted to, to make this final and mm. yeah, he, he 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 played one of his worst games. Like mm. this is reminiscent of his play in the GS Caltex Cup, but yeah, the GS Caltex Cup final, but at the very at, at the very least, um, in that no no disrespect to Choi Jong, but in the GS Caltex Cup final, he was playing Shin Jin So, and yeah. and Shin Jin So has a habit of making people look like amateurs. Yeah. Um, um, now yeah. You, you may remember uh, Bjorn Sangyo's game in the LG Cup. That was probably his the worst performance of any player in the LG Cup. Oh um, yes, his game against Kim Myung Hoon. Yeah. That was yeah. also a complete disaster, maybe more so than this, than this one. Um, but he was... does he does have a habit of of making of making some really overly aggressive moves on occasion that just end up, mm. you know, failing spectacularly. But in this case, it it seemed like he just yeah he just he just got completely outplayed. Yeah, um, I mean. Um... So, sad news for Byung Sang Yu. It's great news for Choi Jong and also potentially for the world of Baruk because this means Choi Jong is through to the final of the Samsung Cup. Unbelievable. Choi Jong. The, and, the, and so, this is, she's actually the first woman to make the final of a world major. So, mm. Rui Nawe never made the final. Yep. So Choi Jong is in the final of a world major. So this is this is history, yeah. You know, Baduk history, and this is this is like this has actually made news outside of Baduk. Like um, in the in the Baduk subreddit. So there's mm. we have the Pro Waichi subreddit, but there's also the Baduk subreddit, which is yeah. the most popular um, Baduk place on Reddit. Mm. And they often don't post about pro stuff, pro yeah. news. Yeah. But there was that was literally the entire the entire page on Baduk was about Choi Jong yeah. when she when she won the game. Everyone was everyone was talking about it, and I I think it may have made the news outside, you know, the usual Baduk circles as well. Yeah, um, I do remember on Chinese Weibo, which is like you know Chinese Twitter, very popular in China. It it's got a hotness hotness um list of the 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 most like you know uh, popular news items and uh, for for the moment and uh, it was uh, this Choi Jong uh, making the final was ranked as high as sixth on that list so yeah that's crazy it's pretty crazy and um, and it's just yeah it's just so amazing so impressive like. We've been like we've been talking about Choi Jong a lot, like Choi and Choi Jong has has been, you know, you know, the st one of the stars of the KBA, like one of the major focuses of the of the KBA and on Baiduk TV and stuff. But yeah. but usually it's in relation to her, you know, performance, her really strong performance and and achievements in the women's circuit, right? 
you know, like things like the the Wu Qingwan Cup and all of the women's domestic tournaments that she yeah. seems to dominate in. Mm. Um, I I don't think even they, um, the KBA and 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 the Korean sort of go a uh, little community were genuinely expecting that she would achieve something like this, the final of a world major. Yeah, crazy. Um, so yeah, Koji on his social media basically says, oh, "This is before the game even finished." So of course, Cho, uh, Koji had the same assessment as other pros. <coughs> Apologies. Um, basically, he thought Choi Jung was definitely going to win from from a certain point onwards. So before the game had even finished, Koji posted, "I'm witnessing history being made." So con- uh, Choi Jung is about to make the final of the Samsung Cup. And I myself exited this competition at the round of 32. So, so Kirji has shared his congratulations. Apparently, Kirji and Choi Jong play a lot of games online. And one of Choi Cho Jong's dreams was to uh, uh, <coughs> win an international opens major and to beat Kirji in an official game. So, whatever, whatever it is, Choi Jong is getting closer to her one of her dreams. And uh, this can only be good for the world of Baruch. Um, well, I hopefully it inspires more women to to play, to play hmm. Baruch. Yeah, that that would be great. Yeah, um, because it is it is you know it's a mental sport. So men and women have hmm. no advantages over each other, unlike physical sports like running and things like right. that. It's it's completely even competition. Um, and it, you know, it, in an ideal world, there'd be the same number of men and women, um, in pros, but obviously, yeah. you know, for reasons that I'm not, you know, an expert in, yeah. um, you know, it's a, it, it, it has historically been a male dominated, uh, sport, mm. but Choi Jong has, you know, just given more evidence that, that women can play just as well as the men. Mm. And it, like this is this would be this in in chess this would be equivalent to Judith Polgar yeah. making the world champion playing in the world championship match right yeah right yeah it would it's like it 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 really is that incredible and and that momentous historic yeah and you you know based on the way she's played you know and based on what's already happened. You can't write her off, mm. like winning the whole thing. Yeah. But that being said, we don't know yet. Well, at the time that she'd won, mm. it hadn't been. We didn't know who the other finalist was going to be because yeah. the the uh, the second semi final wasn't going to be played until the next day, the Saturday. Yeah. So shall we? Yeah. Is there anything more that you wanted to say about? No, I think it's it's pretty clear at this point that you know it's yeah Beyonce's gone and um, it's good it's going to get killed. Um, now the other the other the other game was between um, uh, uh, Shin Jin So and Kim Myung Hyun, right? Um, yes. And basically, people were saying that, uh, for example, Tang Wei Shin who was saying that, oh, I hope that Kim Myung Hyun makes the final. Uh, obviously by beating Shin Jin So because Choi Jong would have presumably a better chance of winning versus Kim than versus uh, Shin but I guess it wasn't really to be because uh, Shin Jin So managed to beat Kim Ming Hun in the other It's interesting that, that Tang Wei Jing said he hoped um, Kim Ming Hun would win because Kim Ming mm. Hun was the person who actually knocked out Tang Wei Jing Well, I mean that's how much Tang Wei Jing wanted Choi Jong to win I guess Mm. Mm. Uh, but um, uh, I think this game was again a very, very, uh, a fairly interesting game. This this actually was an interesting game, and mm. like it seems like, it seems like we have a higher proportion of games in this tournament that um, that uh, that that end up being decided by a few points yeah. with no, no, no big groups dying. Yeah. Crazy. Now, uh, in this game, uh, a lot of the commentary I watched was, 
a little bit surprised by this big knight's move by Kim Min Hyun as white here. Uh, it does seem a bit unusual, but um, and most of the pro said that uh, Sin Jin <coughs> So played really well uh, in the way he handled this because he kind of noticed. Sin Jin So is black, right? Uh, Sin Jin So is black. So Sin Jin So noticed that this 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 move seems a bit far, mate. So he goes, well, that's your key point, your shape. So Kim Min Hyun has to fix his shape. So far, so normal. But after Kim Min Hyun fixes his shape, uh, Sin Jin So attaches right away. So that's the uh, disadvantage of playing a bit further. So Sin Jin So just didn't let this chance go to waste. He make makes use of it immediately. So like, the moment he noticed like a shape issue with your opponent, he exploits it like right away. Um, so anyway, they, this is not too bad. So he kind of just kept fighting a little bit, uh, make some points here and there. Um, and I think at some point, it, it looked like that Kim Ming Hyun might be leading a little bit. I think in the interview that I saw with uh, Sin Jin So, after the game, Sin Jin So even said that he felt that going to Yosei that he was potentially slightly behind. Um, but whatever it may be, and uh, as Sin Jin So played, again, this move was highly uh, praised by the pros. Now, this, this move looks a bit looks like quite normal but apparently um, it kind of cuts off the connection for this white group uh, on this side and it's it's very very at attacking and also destroys any potential but also it's if it needs to defend it can slide under so it's it's actually a really beautiful multi-purpose move over here uh, but anyway they keep keep on playing this for a little bit i think it ended up being that um uh, Kim Ming Hyun ended up resigning, but I think it was uh, about four but, or five points in it. Oh yes, but but no, there was there was more than that. So if you go back to move ninety um, six, yeah. Hmm. So the AI did not like move ninety seven. It, it did not like um, this move. Can can we open a key for this? Yeah. You don't mind? Yeah. I so it actually, so. Uh, black, so black played h5. Right. Uh, and I believe, I believe that the AI recommended move was h6. H5, h6, like this. Yes, and I believe it's because with h5, white does have the ability to, cre to create complications. Right. Which, which will, I mean, and that was what, that was why white was apparently slightly ahead right but very slightly mm. um just a one line difference yes yeah, so i believe um at some point white needed to play g5 g5 push yes yeah, so maybe um no no yeah maybe yeah maybe here mm um yeah okay yes yes white should have tried playing g5 here something like that suspect yeah perhaps so. yeah yeah so yeah so white gets destroyed somebody some maybe something like that the I thing is it's only a couple of points it's not a ki it's not a killing move right it's a it's a Yosei move, but I'm guessing that White, yeah, White is able to to get a couple of points from from that move. It, it's obviously very complicated, but the the problem is mm. the problem is uh, Kim Young Hun as White never plays it. Yeah, um, he never plays it. And then if you move, if you look at um, go to move one thirty five, go to go to move one thirty five. Yep, yeah. yeah, that's. Shinjin, so he obviously he must have noticed that White could have played G five. Yeah. And so when he had the chance, when he had the chance, he plays G six, and all of that, all of White White's opportunity, any hope that White had, mm. um, of of having an advantage yeah. in your say is gone. Yeah. Crazy. Um. Yeah. And it's it's only there's still only a couple of points in it, maybe two or three points. Right. But for Shinjin, so that's. 
it, it may as well be game over. Apparent, apparent, like the way he's been playing yeah. in this tournament. Um, there's nothing. And see, you, yeah, just there, there was some very clever play on the left there. Yeah. Um, playing inside that territory. And it ended up, it ended up getting him a couple of points on the outside. Right, yeah. Because he um, gets a block in Sente. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because he blocked in Sente. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that must be very. Fr- yeah. So if you if you go back to move one fifty eight. Fifty eight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So he plays inside here just so he can. Yeah. That move there. Yeah. White has to play a four now. Yeah. Yeah. So Man. so black gets extra points on the outside. Yeah. It's it's so clever. It's so sneaky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and Kim Young Hoon is probably thinking, God damn it, I lost, I lost another couple of points. I can't, yeah, I can't afford to do that. And he couldn't afford to do that. There was just, there's just no coming back now. Yeah, just incredible. Um, how Sin Jin So just wins. I think, I think in the end, he, he was eating by about four or five points. And yeah, uh, and I think it, it was it, the the board got to a, got to a place where it was kind of very easy to count, and. Uh, uh, Kim Min Hyun just just resigns, so no fairy yeah, tales. Kim Min resigned, and he certainly was not. He did not act the same way as Byun Sang Il. I think he was more accepting that he's yeah, he's not really playing a human being. He's he's playing Shin Jin So. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. um, but yeah. yeah, this this seemed people were saying that that Kim Jong Hoon had a chance, like was mm-hmm. winning. Yeah, and I've I've so I'm not sh- I'm not sure if that's a, entirely true. I, I would I would say that. If he if he did find that um, mm. G G five move, yeah, perhaps he may have been ahead, but mm. it wouldn't have been over for Black. Right, it wouldn't have been over for Shin Jin So. There, there was still more to play mm. at that point in the game, but perhaps perhaps White did have some opportunities. Right, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, Shin Jin So deserved to win this game. Yeah, I, um, I think it's now. By making the final here, do you know that? Did you know that Shin Jin So has broken a record? Uh, what's that? He's broken. He's he's made the final of all of six consecutive uh, international titles, six times. Uh, that was six. a record. Okay. Uh, the last, the last, uh, the last record was Lee Chang Ho with five. So he played in five. Uh, basically five consecutive uh, international uh, titles competitions and it, it made it con- five consecutive finals okay so Shinjin so he's made the final of Samsung Cup the the last year's Samsung Cup yeah the so Ing Cup Ing Cup um, LG Cup the Chunlan Cup Chunlan Cup yeah the LG Cup yeah and, and this year's Samsung Cup that's 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 five and of course, the the one where he lost to Koji, he also made a final of that one. But that was this, yeah. But that that was the Samsung Cup in twenty twenty. Yeah, but it's but wasn't didn't the M Lily Cup final happen after that? Yeah, but um, the M Lily Cup competition. Oh, the semifinals were played before the yeah. Samsung Cup, right? Okay. Yeah. So he, he's kind of so, so basically every competition he's participated in, he's made a final. That's how right. it is. And of the but of those, yep. he's only won two of them. Right, 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 right. He's um, lost two of them, and two of them have yet to be played. Yeah, yeah. So okay, yeah. So let's let's see let's see what but, um what he makes. Speaking out. of this final, Shin Jin So versus Choi Jong. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't write this. You couldn't have made it. A- this is like this is the this is the Korean Golden Boy mm. versus the Baduk Empress. Right. The the best male the best men's player in the world versus the best women's player in the world. Yeah. Unbelievable. Un- unbelievable stuff. I don't no one would have predicted this. Mm. No one. And if you think about it, mm. Choi Jong, I remember in the qualifiers, Choi Jong almost lost her first round game in the qualifiers. She should have lost. Right. To be honest. Yeah. And there was another game in the qualifiers where she was mm. behind heavily as well. Yeah. Now Shin Jin So versus Choi Jong. Now these finals, mm. this final will be played Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's a best of three. Yeah. Um, if it finishes two two zero, there won't be a third game. No. Yeah. 
And I think that people are saying that, that basically Choi Jong should, I mean, Shin Jin So should easily win this. What? Right. Yeah. Uh, that's what, that's what people have been suggesting. But yeah. I mean, the thing is that I, uh, yes, obviously Shin Jin So has an insane record. Yeah. Like against anyone. Yeah. And especially in competitions. Um, mm. But Choi Jong has beaten players she's never beaten before. Yeah. And Choi Jong's having the tournament of her life. I mean, surely she has some sort of she has a chance. Mm. I, I I I do feel obviously I do feel that if it was just based on technique, mm. Shin Jin So would. Choi Jong has no chance. Like, yeah. if if they were playing each other and they didn't know who their opponent was, for instance, mm. like it was just a, they were just using random aliases, yeah. Shin Jin So would win yeah. two nil. Yeah, but there has to be some sort of psychological aspect as well. You know, the fact that Shin Jin So is is expected to win, he probably expects yeah. himself to win. Mm. You know, that could have been that may have been what ended up causing Yang Ding Jin to lose. May have been what resulted in Byun Sang-il losing. So yeah. maybe, you know, maybe that, that pressure, mm. you know, might might give Choi Jong a chance. But yeah. that being said, Shin Jin So has shown, you know, over time, mm. he's he's dealt better and better with, with pressure. Yeah. I mean, we saw earlier this year in the Nongshim Cup, he was Korea's last player and he had to win four games. Yeah. And he won all four of them, of course. Yeah. And then, um, you know, in the Jar League for his team, he mm. won all of his games in the playoffs. Yeah. Including, you know, a, a title deciding game against Ding Hao, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Um, he he beat he beat um, Tag Mei Jing in the Chunlin Cup Final two nil. Mm. He beat Yang Ding Jing in the LG Cup Final two nil, including, you know including some insane magic there. Yeah. It's not easy to, it's not easy to beat Shin Jin So. And I, I think from his interviews, he, he does, he doesn't seem to be underestimating Choi Jong. No. And you can understand why, because as we've mentioned before, he's, he's, he's reached the previous two Samsung cup finals. He lost both of them. Yeah. I don't, I don't think he's going to be taking anything for granted here. Yeah. So, yeah. It's. It seems. Uh, I anything can happen. Anything can happen, and there's, based on what we've seen in this tournament, you can't say that Choi Jong has zero percent chance. No. But you have to say that this. Shin Jin So is is more difficult than any of the players she's faced, and she has to win. Just she, she has to beat Shin Jin So twice. Yeah. Out of three. Yeah. So. I mean, she can she can win once. She can get lucky once. Mm. Yeah, and can it happen twice? Yeah. Now, I I referenced this uh, article, which happened, which appeared on Eker. Apparently, it's a translation of a Korean article. So now it's been Google translated from Chinese into to English. So it's Korean to Chinese and into English. So now this this bit I think is is fairly reasonably translated. This is Shin Jin So saying, in this final, because of Choi Jong's recent form or psychological factor or whatever it may be, his his probability of losing to Choi Jong is ten percent higher than usual. Okay, so I guess it depends on what the starting number is, but maybe he thinks that as there's zero chance I will lose to Choi Jong, but now I have ten ten percent chance. I don't know. I don't know what is the starting number, but if you read the interview uh, of um, Shin Jin So. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if one can find one where it's properly translated. It it doesn't sound like Shin Jin So is taking his, his chances. He's he's really preparing, preparing, uh, for this, just like any other final. And and we all know what's happened to uh, Shin Jin So in the last two Samsung Cups. He's lost to Kerje, and when he's expected to win against Park Chun Hwan, he's gone down one two. So he's he's yet to win a Samsung Cup, and this is his third consecutive Samsung Cup final is it going to be third time lucky for Shin Jin so I guess most people are saying yes but Choi Chong has you know done the miracle three times already uh, beating Ichiriki Yang Ling Shin and Byung Sang Il so 
I'm really hoping for magic here, Gaza. But what what's your what's your final final prediction about this um, final? I'm not. I can't make a prediction. There's nothing like there's so much stuff that's happened here. I I, I can't. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna say Choi Jong two nil. Yes. Let's hope so, Gaza. <laughs> Let's, let's do it. Let's do this. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. And I think that's what, then, what most people are hoping for. That would uh, that might even push Choi Jong's, you know, to to number one. Like if if a woman making a final is already, you know, headline news. Imagine if Choi Jong wins this. If Crazy. if she wins the Samsung Cup, yeah. I'll say this: if she wins the Samsung Cup, yeah. she can put her hat in the ring for best women's player of all time. Right. Yes. Yes. She. At, as of now, I still think it's Rui Nawe. Yeah. Based on her longevity. Yeah. And, you know, her achievements. And Rui Nawe, mm. um, if people don't know, she actually won two open domestic titles. Right, right. In Korea. Mm. So she, she won the Kuksu and she won the Maxim Cup. Yeah. Crazy. Um, and that's their open titles. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 Jong, that, this that, is Choi Jong's first final in open competition. She's never yeah. made a domestic yeah. um, open final. Mm. Um, so this is her first final in open competition. If she wins this, mm. she can. There's a genuine argument, in my opinion, yeah. as to who the greatest women women's player of all time is. Yeah, and and you got to remember when Rui won those domestic titles in Korea. That that was when Korea was like by far the the strongest. Um, yes, that was that was Lee Chang Ho at his peak, and Cho Hun Hyun was also strong, um, yeah. one of the strongest in the world. And she actually beat both of them to win the Kuksu title. Yeah, crazy. And um, people may know that you know, in in their early rivalry, Rui, Rui Nawe actually beat Lee Chang Ho many times. I think in their first five games, Rui Nawe won four. Right. Yeah. Now. In Shin Jin So and Choi Jong's case, they have played in the past. They've actually had four official games. Mm. Um, and Shin Jin So has won all of them. Right. Um, so there doesn't seem to be that sort of psychological burden that Lee Chang Ho seemed to have against Roy Nawe. But things may change now that it's the Samsung Cup. In those four games, three of them were, were speed games. Three of them were very fast games. There were, it was 20-second increment with... Yep. Very little main time, mm-hmm. and one of one of them had was the same time controls as Samsung Cup. Yeah, um, but they haven't played each other in an official game since 2020. Right. So they haven't played recently. Of course, Shin, you could argue that Shinjin So's gotten even stronger since then. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, Choi Jong's having the tournament of her life. Yes. So. You can't you can't write her off like right. the way she's been played is the way she's been playing has been better than she's played ever. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. So she's she's far far outplaying her 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 ranking. Mm. Is her strategy good enough to beat Shinjin? So. Yeah. So we shall see. We shall it see. will be tough. It will be tough. But until we see, honestly, until we see what happens in that first game, I can't say anything. It, it could be, it 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 could be a you know a really crazy game like the Yang Dingxin Ichiriki Ryo mm. um, that Choi Jong ends up winning somehow, yeah. or it could just be that Shin Jin So plays like Shin Jin So and just completely flattens her, yeah. gives her no chance whatsoever. Yeah, I can't wait, and I'm sure. We'll be covering this in great depth. Yes, and hopefully we'll have a special guest yes. to discuss the Samsung Cup final yes. in the next yes. podcast. Yes. Now, Gaza, that was a great wrap of the Samsung Cup from the round of 16 to all the way to the semifinals. Um, Gaza, and if there's anything else you wanted to mention, we might quickly cover off two Japanese items before we you know, finish off this podcast, this episode. Oh, okay, so we're going to cover those in this podcast Let's... yeah very quickly very quickly all right all right we so can... shall we do this a massive right, one go. a massive one a massive one happened in japan in the Meijin. Meijin game seven has happened and guess what happened gaza we have shibano toramaru killing one of yama's dragons uh, to reverse the game 
and win Meijin again. So Yama's lost his Meijin title to Shibano Toramaru. Yeah, so this game was played during the quarterfinals. Yeah. On the same day. So the Meijin is a two-day game. It was played on Wednesday and Thursday, which was yeah. the same day as the quarterfinals. Yeah. So unfortunately, I it wasn't I wasn't focused on this game. Right. Obviously, um the you know the the uh, the most exciting part of this game happened at the same time as Choi Jong was was winning against Yang Ding Jin. Yeah, yeah. So I was I didn't actually yeah. get to see the the whole game, but I do remember um, the first day. So the first the um, I think it lasted maybe eighty seven moves or something yeah. like that. The first day. Yeah. Um, um, so, so basically, the, the first day started by Yama Yuta as black taking lots of points everywhere, um, and then Shibano Toramaru just not making a lot of points. But I think one one thing one thing I found very really interesting was that um, after Black kind of captured his three stones, uh, Shibano kind of played this move, and this move's whole purpose, obviously, is just to destroy Black's potential for an eye over here in Sente, um, and notice that. Even after capturing these three stones, Black technically isn't fully alive because that's technically just one eye. But um, Black's taken a lot of territory. And I think by the end of the first day, it looked like something like this. Uh, it was somewhere around here. 87, move 87 was right. the last move of the first day. And right. the sealed move was move 88. Right. Yep. And, it and so... Down. And and something incredible happened here as well. Whatever the... Whatever happened here, uh, Yamayuta managed to capture all of these as well. So Yamayuta has taken a lot of points. I guess the only thing that's ha that that really isn't uh, happening for uh, Yama is that this group is not fully alive. So I guess uh, very soon you realize. I think Shibano realized that you know his only chance of winning this game was to kill that group, um, and that's when kind of when it's when it all started. He plays in the corner. And you know what? This reminds me a lot of the Honinbo game seven right. last year. Yeah. Where and this was, you know, the circumstances were very similar. Ayama won games five and six to make it three three. Yep. And Shibano went on well, Shibano went on a wild adventure trying to kill Ayama's mm. big dragon and it yeah. ended up failing. Right, yeah. And it looks like Shibano is trying it again, trying mm. to play a bit desperately. But yeah. he seems to have started off by, by. It looks like he killed Black in the upper right, actually. Uh, not. Or at not, least. Not not sure about that. Maybe maybe he just got some sente sente moves. Uh, maybe he just got some sente moves. Yeah, right. maybe, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not. I, I don't think the top is is dead because I think. I think really for Shibano to win, he has to kind of kill this group, and so that's. Oh my bad. No, yeah, right. Yeah, so he's he's maybe just you know done some preparation, and now it's going for the kill. Now even at this point, I believe, I don't think AI had Shib like Yama at like ninety nine percent or whatever, but it, the Yama's percentage was always higher, and I and I would imagine if if Yama had lived, then it's getting a game over for Shibano. So. And I kind of expected Yama to to live here, honestly, but uh, it it didn't it didn't really it didn't really happen. Um, I guess my first instinct would be to attach somewhere around here, but Yama made this move, uh, which I think was heavily criticized by AI. I also don't fully understand these moves. I, I guess I can ha see how making a move here kind of gives your eye shape, and it can tiger's mouth here. Or jump here, so this move maybe gives Yama some more options, maybe. But um, let's see what happens. Okay, so, so maybe yeah, maybe that that became a sente move. Um, because, yeah, I don't know. But oh, so Shimano goes for the kill, destroys the eye shape here, destroys one more eye shape. Um, it was it was kind of kind of crazy looking at this because, uh, yeah, Yama just had no no way to live, um, even though he kind of spent a few moves here, but 
somehow all of all of Shibano's moves just kind of destroys all of his eye shape. But I anyway, keep going. So the last eye shape is destroyed. So even though Yamas made this one move here, that move didn't help him with any eye shape. Nothing. There was no eyes. Didn't make anything. All the eye shapes were destroyed by Shibano. So at this point, Yama is probably in some deep trouble. Uh, let's try to set up some kind of crazy capturing race, but it's never gonna really work. So you can see here, this white stone is like cut off. Yeah. Yeah, so that's when uh, Yama resigned and yeah. he, his dragon was killed. And so therefore, Shibano's regained the Majin that he first won in terms of 19, I believe. So, yeah. So that's yes, one thing. and yep. one other thing. Mm. just want to quickly point out that this is the... Um, this makes um, five different major title holders. Oh, yes. In Japan. Mm. Um, and I... I want to see if I if I have the uh, information here. So, the last time there were five different title holders, I believe was twenty eleven. Right. So, um, Ayama Ayama had the um, the Judan. Right. Um, then, um, but Yamashita Kago had the Honinbo and the Meijin. Uh huh. Uh, Cho Yu had the Oza and the Kisei. Right. Hane Naoki had the Gosei and Yuki Satoshi had the Tengen. Right. So mm. that's uh, so back in 2011 there were five, mm. and that was the last time because after that, um, Iyama decided to collect some titles and hang on to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now, yeah, now we have Iyama. He still has three titles, so mm. he still has the Oza, the Honinbo, and the Gosei. Yeah. But um, now we have. Obviously, Shibano with the Meijin, Ichiriki mm. with the Kisei. Yeah. Um, Susha Wan has the Judan, yep. and Seki Kitaro has the Tengen. Yeah. So, five. And, um, you know, Iyama's playing the Oza at the moment. Um, mm. He is up 1 0, but if he does lose yeah. um, to Yuzeng Chi, that will be six different title holders. Ah, huh. crazy. And the maximum you can have is seven. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's ever been seven different title holders. I, I only checked the last time there were five. Right. 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 Uh, I mean, yeah, that does sound quite remarkable. Uh, okay. So, uh, apart from this big Meijin game in Japan, there was also another big title match. That was the forty-first women's Honimbo between Fujisawa Arena and Ueno Asami. Now, you may recall in the previous podcast that we said that uh, this is a Ueno must-win game, must game for Ueno because she was 2 nil down. And she is coming off a high in the Hoban Cup where she had collected three wins, I believe. But um, this is the third game. And basically, Ueno has to win to remain in this series because it's only a best of five but it wasn't to be for Fujisawa Arena and Yueno Asami it was a very tense game they it went down to the wire but Fujisawa Arena only won by point half so it was a very very tense USA battle by the end and before the game they were assessed to be around 50 50 chance of winning so uh, so basically Fujisawa Arena had has retained her women's honimbo title with a 3-0 score over Ueno Asan. Yes, and uh I worth mentioning this game was played on the Friday, so this was actually played at the same time where mm. Choi Jong was playing Byun Sang Il. Right, yeah. So once again it was sort of overshadowed by mm. by Choi Jong, maybe a little bit of revenge yep. for Choi Jong. Yeah. Um because she lost to Asami in the Hoban Cup, so she, yeah, you know, out, out spectacular. You know, not only does Asami lose, but but Choi Jong manages to make the final on the same day. Yeah, <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, a little bit. I would say this is a bit disappointing for us, for you know, Asami. She she has had a great year with yeah. the Hoban Cup heroics and winning mm. the International Senko Cup and also the Azu Central Hospital Cup, yeah. winning the final over Fujisa Arena there. But yeah. um, didn't manage to win a game in this mm. in this um, Honimbo final, women's yeah. Honimbo final. Now the the time controls here are four hours each right. and it's possible that you know asami's style mm. may not be as um effective at these longer time controls where her opponent has more time to yeah uh, figure out how to out to read the position and figure out how to respond to to her aggressiveness yeah her her aggressiveness yes yeah. it's awesome. it's just a theory but mm. um i obviously yeah, even even with that theory, I am surprised that Yuno Asami failed to yeah. to win a game. I I really do feel that she is on the road to being the number one women's player in Japan. Right. Okay. Um, but it's it seems like she's not quite not quite cementing herself that status just yet. Not. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's still uh, it's still possible that yeah Fujisawa still has more domestic women's titles than mm. you know Asami. Mm. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it, it seems up. like it seems like there's still a little bit of a hurdle there. Yeah, so she could be catching up, but um, we we shall see. I think we'll see, you know, them two battling it out for a few more years, and then we'll see potentially Sumire. Nakamura rising up to challenge them. Yeah, or well, hopefully Sumire can can do the same thing as Choi Jong and um, you know start performing in these me- in these open open competitions. Yeah, yeah, really looking forward to that. Now, Gaza, unless there's anything else you want to cover, it might be time for the calendar. Well, there's really only one important event on this week in the calendar. Sorry to say, but yeah. it's the Samsung Cup final. Samsung Cup final, yeah, three days. That will yes. be uh, the, the most massive one. And and then uh, uh, just maybe worth mentioning is that the fourth Nearway Pink Cup, I believe the semi final, is happening on the Monday, which is at the same, so on the same day as Samsung Cup. And also game two, Yama Yuta versus Yu Cheng Chi, is also happening, it's happening on the Friday. And uh, let's not look forward too much. Uh, but I mean, in case we miss the recording again, we have the LG Cup quarterfinal starting on the Sunday. Uh, so right, I, mean, I remember that uh, Shinjin So is playing Miyu Ting. Right. Yes, that's right. Um, that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would be another massive one. I do believe it's. I think Koji is still in the LG Cup. Yes. Yeah. Um. As, yeah. So I'm not sure who is playing. Was it Kang Dong Yoon? Uh. Yeah. I think I vaguely remember Kang Dong Yoon. Uh. Yeah. Let me see if I can quickly find the um, the matchups. I believe Kim Young Hoon is still in this competition. As but Park Chun Wan is not. Right. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. Maybe I. I couldn't. I couldn't find the. Doesn't matter because we'll be jumps. we'll be we'll we'll post before we'll do a podcast before then surely yeah yeah so yeah we'll look forward to that but apart from that all eyes will be on the Samsung Cup final Choi Jong versus Sun Jin So yeah this is all this could be a once in a lifetime once in a generation event yeah this final yeah yeah, yeah. so that so so Gaza thanks. For another awesome episode. I can't wait for the Samsung Cup final. My pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.